Turning the work using the Japanese short rows method is super easy. Once we get to the point where the pattern tells us to turn the work, we simply turn the work. That's it. That's how easy it is. We do not attach any stitch markers because, frankly, we don't need it. Once we understand the logic behind this method, we can easily find the strand that we need to pick up and avoid all the stitch markers dangling on the wrong side of the work. The first thing we do once we turn the work is to slip the first stitch. And we always do it purl-wise. If the stitch is a purl, as it is in the case over here, we keep the yarn at the front of the work, like this. And then we work until the next turning point and we do exactly the same thing. We turn the work. No special wrapping, no other precautions. And as you knit, uh, as you work a few stitches, you will notice that, of course, turning the work without doing all those things creates a gap that is quite visible. But we don't worry about that gap for now. We will deal with it later when we get to working this area of project again. But now we need to slip the first stitch again because we've just turned the work. And this time it's a knit, so we keep the yarn at the back of the work and we slip it again purlwise. That means we insert the tip of the right needle into the stitch from right to left. The more interesting things happen when we get to the gap. So when we do it on the knit side of the work, we work all stitches until we actually get to that gap. You cannot miss it, it's very noticeable, so don't worry, you will see when you approach the gap. Uh, all short row methods are based on the fact that somehow we close the gap. And with the Japanese short rows, we do it by bringing the this, this strand from over here, pulling it out and knitting it together with the first stitch on the other side of the gap. First thing we do is we bring the yarn up and then we rotate the work so that we see a few wrong side rows over here. So it's easier for us to find that strand. The strand is the one that is underneath the strand that runs between the last two worked stitches. So the first thing we do is we locate the last two worked stitches. And those stitches are very easy to locate because they're right here, these uh, two stitches from the tip of the right needle, because we see the yarn is attached over here and then the stitch next to it. These are our little guys. And we are looking for the strand that runs between them. So this strand is over here. And now we are looking at the strand that is right underneath it. So the way the fabric is placed right now, it will be right above it. And this strand is over here. So it's not difficult at all to see that strand. We remember to keep the yarn out of the way and we insert the tip of the left needle from the bottom up, the way this, um, the fabric is placed right now, it would be bottom up. We insert it under that strand, the one that we found, the one that we're gonna pull a bit and knit together with the first stitch at the other side of the gap. Now we bring the yarn to the back of the work, kind of wrapping that picked up strand. And that does the trick that makes this strand less noticeable on the wrong side of the work. And now we knit these two stitches together, the stitch and the picked up strand, just like this. That's it, no gap. See, it's all nice and clean. Now we work to the end of the row or to the next turning point and then we do exactly the same thing. We simply turn the work. How easy is that, right? And then we slip the stitch purlwise, this time keeping the yarn at the front of the work because it is a purl. Once we get to the gap on the purl side of the work, we'll do pretty much the same thing. We'll pick up a strand and we'll purl it together with the stitch at the, the first stitch at the other side of the gap, this little guy. But to make sure it does not show on the right side of the work, we're gonna place that strand at the left side of that stitch. Here's how we do it. We start by slipping the stitch purlwise from the left needle to the right needle. So this is our gap and we are looking at the stitch, the first stitch at the other side of the gap. So we slip it purlwise. Then we bring the yarn up to keep it out of the way and we keep looking for that strand again. 
Now it's going to be a little bit confusing because we slipped that stitch and it's staying here on the needle, kind of confusing us, but we ignore it as if it's not there. We just tolerate it for now, but we're not going to take it into account. We're still looking for the last two worked stitches, not the two stitches from the tip of the right needle, but the last two worked stitches. And these stitches are going to be right here. So this is the stitch that is attached to the yarn and then the stitch next to it. So in this setup, it's going to be the second and the third stitch from the tip of the uh, right needle. And we're looking for the strand that is between them. This is our guide, the strand. And then we go one step down and look for the strand that is right underneath that strand. And this is the strand we need. And we insert the tip of the left needle under that strand, again from the bottom up, just as we did last time. And then we return the slip stitch, our temporary guest on this needle, we return it back to the left needle, again purlwise without twisting it. Now we are ready to purl these two stitches together. And that's exactly what we do. And then we work to the end of the row or to the next turning point. And then we keep going on and on and on until we do the shaping that we need to do using the Japanese short rows method. And once you do the shaping, you will see that the stitches are completely uninterrupted. So you see those chains of stitches running smoothly as if nothing had happened, but you can clearly see that there is shaping here that happened right over here. When you turn the work, you will see that where the shaping happened. Uh, it's right over here. But because we wrapped the uh, picked up strands with the yarn, we kind of uh, made them less noticeable because they're kind of woven in into the fabric. So it's not that bad at all. And we did it all without using any stitch markers. To get the full photo tutorial about this method, go to tendrosday.com slash Japanese dash short dash rose. Happy knitting, my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.